And it's beautiful now to be here at the Outspoken. <laughs> and when they say, well, Outspoken, you want me to become belligerent or what, or whatever, to be outspoken. Yeah. So like, she told me that like, they were going to be putting my name up there because my, 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 my clip didn't seem to want to work, or my images or something. So she said, well, I'm going to put your name up there so people know who you are in case they want to check you out or something like that. Well, that's the name, but you know, sometimes I go by other names or people call me by other names. You know? I mean, last week, this guy was calling me Franco and everybody thought oh, my name was Franco. And I've been knowing him for 20 something years and when he answered me, he introduced me as Franco. And, and then I had to tell her, oh, well, sometimes I'm Shepherd, sometimes I'm Frank, sometimes I'm Franklin. It's whatever person want to call me at the time. What are you talking about, Jesse? What are you talking about today? What are you talking about, Jesse? Jesse, what did you want to say? Well, I'm just looking for the first nigga. What? I'm looking for the first nigga. Jesse, what are you talking about? We've been in all kinds of places with skeletons and bones from thousands and thousands of years. What are you talking about? You looking for the first thing? Go, oh, you don't understand me, my boy. I'm talking about the first nigger of everything. The first nigger in that scoop. The first nigger on that job. The first nigger laying next to you in the bed. You don't know about the first nigger? You never been the first nigger? You never been number one. Then you never got, where did you come from? Or I never saw anything like you before. I want to take you on a journey. A journey from A to Z. I want to take you on a journey. A journey so you can see. Oh, Adam, being civil, deserted Eve for goodness. Hiding inside Jubilee. Keeping little moments not open, perhaps quickly rejecting subject, terribly upset, venting, wondering, Alexander, yearning, Zeke, won't take you on a journey, a journey from A to Z. Won't take you on a journey, a journey so you can see. Wake up, wake up, rich folks. All folks need health care for protection. Donnie and Rick's going over to the Middle East trying to get peace. Ain't going to get no peace. Making a lot of money, but they can do a lot with that money. All those prophets could pay for the health care. I was walking on a Sunday on my way to my mentor's house. She was also my glass dealer in San Francisco, and she knew a lot of people, so I go over in the afternoon to get a joint. And when I get there, she has a visitor from Chicago and I'm trying to tell her my woes, uh, you know, I was looking for some money to supplement my acting. I needed another job on the side. So the guy, he listened to my woes and he understood and then he offered me an opportunity. Go oh, back to school, an opportunity? Well, it seems that he was this high powered lawyer. I mean, I had read about him in the newspaper. He had worked on the Attica. I don't know how many people remember Attica. But he was one of those guys who worked on the Attica defense. And then he had worked with Desi Woods. And he was the lawyer for Fred Hampton from the Black Panthers. Now, I'm not talking about the Black Panthers movie. I'm talking about the guys that were heavy. So he, was, he was, had worked for them. And he had introduced himself to me. And he offered me a job. And I said, well, I need some money. I'm an actor. We always need money. So it seems he offered me an opportunity to work with him on a case, because he was in California. But he didn't pass the bar exam, but he was a great lawyer, he was a great lawyer, but he didn't pass the, couldn't get past the California bar exam. But he was working on the case as an investigator, and he offered me an opportunity to work with him. 
They get half the money. Yeah, this is cool. I can act. I can do this. Play a little private detective on the side. Well, it was cool. You know. So it was like it was a a murder case. And so uh, he and I worked a total of one day on that case together because he went back to Chicago and there I was stuck in the summer on a murder case. Well, it seems that. Uh, Bubber and Junior had left Mr. Percy's house that fall before and halftime of a football game. And they went over to the corner store. They went down the block to go and buy some stuff, refreshments to eat at the football game at the second half. And then when they were getting there, Miss Baskerville was pulling up in her car. And they opened the door for her. They were polite young men. And they went inside and they bought what they had. And then they came out. And Miss Baskerville's car was couldn't start. So uh, Bubba said, well, I'll help you. And Junior went over to make a phone call in the telephone booth. Well, Miss Baskerville, she went around the back of the car. She got some things out the car to help him fix it. And as she was coming back to the car to help Bubba, somebody drove by, car blasted, shot everything. Buckshots went into Miss Baskerville legs. Junior was Bubba, Junior was over in the corner with a half a hand. And Bubba was underneath the hood of the car, dead. Somebody did it. Somebody saw it, they said. And I had to get these guys off. I was working for the accused working for the accused. Well, somebody had to make a mistake. And somebody made a mistake, and I saw it. And I got them off. Didn't matter if they did it or didn't. They couldn't prove it. They made the mistake, and that was the rules. That was the rule.